Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most compassionate, all praise be to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon his final messenger, Muhammad. And may the peace and the blessings and the mercy of God Almighty Allah be upon each one of you listening to these few words. Today we're going to talk about fasting in Ramadan. We made another video, uh, Getting Ready for Ramadan. And that video was intended especially for, for new Muslims, for people who hadn't fasted before, or maybe for Muslims who'd forgotten a little of that about how to fast. Well, this, this video, these few minutes, we're going to speak about fasting in Ramadan. So it's intended for new Muslims. It's intended for Muslims who've been faithful Muslims all their lives. It's intended for those Muslims who have maybe slid a little bit and need to come back to Allah. So it's intended for all Muslims and indeed for people who are not Muslim as well. They might learn a little about our wonderful faith, our way of life, our deen, Islam. So fasting in Ramadan is it's one of the five pillars of Islam. One of the, so it's pretty important. Pillars, pillars hold up a building. Without the pillars, the building will fall down. And in Islam, we have five five things that Allah Almighty has given us, especially to hold up our faith, our deen, our way of life. We declare shahada. We declare that there's no one worthy of worship, no created thing, no being worthy of worship but Allah alone, and that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his messenger, that shahada. We, we pray five times a day. We, we give zakat. We give a, a portion of our leftover wealth to the poor. We fast in Ramadan, and we go on pilgrimage once in our lifetimes if we're able to, to perform the hajj, the pilgrimage to Mecca. So today we're talking about fasting in Ramadan. Why do we fast? We fast, and th this is very, very important, and maybe sometimes as Muslims we forget why we're doing it. We fast because Allah tells us to fast. That's it. There's no other reason. Allah Almighty tells us in the Quran, fasting is prescribed to you as it was prescribed to those before you that ye may learn taqwa. Now in the, in the other video, I just gave a word or two. We'll remind ourselves about this word taqwa, an Arabic word. It can be translated as maybe piety or maybe fear of the Lord. But what do those really mean? I understand it best, taqwa, as being, being humble in God's presence. By fasting in Ramadan, it helps us to put our lives in, in pro proper perspective. When we pray, you know how when we pray as Muslims, our foreheads touch the ground and we say to Allah Almighty, I am nothing without you. Without you, I can do nothing. And all of those, you know, images we project of ourselves in life of how important we are and we want to be the important and, and be in charge of other people. When we pray, our lives are put into context. We're nothing really. Without Allah, even we couldn't even breathe unless he breathed the life into us each day. So we're nothing without him. So taqwa, fear of the Lord, piety, is what we learn by fasting in Ramadan. That's what Allah tells us. We don't do it to, to, to lose weight. We don't do it to please other people. We don't do it to please the other people in the mosque. Oh, he's fasting, isn't he a good Muslim? That's not why we do it. We fast to please Allah. And... and as well, you know, some people will tell you how wonderful Ramadan is going to be. Now, indeed, Ramadan is wonderful, and I will tell you how wonderful it is. But, just in case you're not feeling all that wonderful when you're fasting, you know, maybe you have that terrible habit of smoking, which you shouldn't have anyway. But say you smoke, and you've given up smoking for Ramadan, and you feel pretty awful. Well, nowhere does it tell us in the Quran that when we fast, we'll see rainbows... And, and little rabbits jumping around and butterflies. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say we'll feel wonderful. 
It simply tells us fast. Fasting is prescribed. And by fasting, inshallah, we learn to put our lives into context. So just a few a few rules of Ramadan. You know, if, if you're new to Ramadan, or if you don't know anything about Ramadan, when when do Muslims fast? Well it's in it's in the month of Ramadan, obviously, one of the one of the months of the of the Muslim year. But when during the month do they fast? They fast from when the Adan sounds for Salat al Fajr for the for the morning prayer. Allahu Akbar. As soon as that sounds in the morning, the fast has begun. And it ends with the call to prayer for the, for the sunset prayer for Salat al-Maghrib. Allahu Akbar. The fast has finished. So we fast from one call to prayer from Salat al-Fajr to the other call to prayer, Salat al-Maghrib. You know, some new to Islam, they make a mistake. They look outside. Is it dark? Is it still dark? It's got nothing to do with that. It's to do with the time of Salat al-Fajr. That's when we... So our fasting begins when the prayer begins. So if we eat after the prayer has, has been called, we're breaking the fast. So let's be very clear. And if we eat a few seconds before the prayer is called for Maghrib, we are breaking the fast. So we fast from Fajr to Maghrib. That's when we fast. How do we fast? What do we do? Well, we don't eat and we don't drink. But there are many other things we don't do. We don't smoke. We don't take things into our bodies. We don't smoke. We don't. In Islam, uh, sexual activity is between a man and his wife. So uh, intercourse in, in, during the, the, the hours of fasting is, is not allowed. Is sex wrong? No, it's not. Food isn't wrong. Drink isn't wrong. But Allah tells us to fast from these things during the hours of fasting. We'll say why in a moment. As well as, as the things we don't take in, also fasting, we fast from, we try to fast from bad thoughts, from, from backbiting, you know, speaking ill of people, using bad language. You see, Ramadan is, is a whole package. It's not just about missing your lunch or not having a cup of tea. It's about becoming a better person, a better Muslim. That's why we do it. And each day in Ramadan, you should be asking yourself, you know, am I a better person today because of my fasting? Now, to be honest, my dear brothers and sisters, you know, if you fasted all day, and it can be tough, and sometimes you'll have a terrible headache and you, you won't feel well, but at the end of the fast, when we break the fast, you know how good it can feel. I fasted today for Allah's sake. And you feel good. Doing good makes you good. And it makes you feel good as well. Just as doing bad things, if the truth be told, makes us feel bad. So Ramadan, it teaches us taqwa, fear of the Lord, piety, and it makes us better people. So we know when we fast. We know what we do to fast. Who, who fasts? Well, Muslims fast. Um, able-bodied Muslims fast. Now, Islam, I say this all the time, Islam is eminently sensible. It's a very sensible way of life, a sensible deen. It all makes sense. So there are some people who are exempt from fasting. Who are the, the chronically ill? They don't have to fast. The very old people, if it would, if it would make them ill, they don't have to fast. A woman who is uh, expecting a baby, who's pregnant, she doesn't have to fast. Uh, little, tiny little children, they don't have to fast. You see, it, it makes sense. It makes sense. Why, why would these people... But is, um, Ramadan isn't a punishment. And, and Allah Almighty doesn't want, us, doesn't want to make us ill by, by, by fasting. But if these people can't fast, you know, they can do other things to help them, to, to gain all the benefits of Ramadan, as other Muslims are gaining. They can pray more, they can recite the Quran more, and so on. So those people are exempt. What if, what if you, you break the fast by mistake? You know, for example, with, with all the best will in the world, your, your intention is in the morning is to fast, but halfway through the day, say you've never fasted before, halfway through the day, you mistakenly, uh, you pick up 
a sweet and put it in your mouth. And then you go, oh, what have I done? Does that invalidate my fast? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. You are still fasting and it doesn't break your fast if it's all to do with intention. If you did it on purpose, if you say, oh, I, I think I'll have a sweet, it won't make much difference, that breaks the fast. And you have to make up for that day of fasting after Ramadan. But if you break the fast accidentally, there is no penalty attached to it. Islam is very sensible. It's very sensible. If you deliberately break the fast, there's a penalty afterwards. If you break the fast by mistake, there is no penalty. If you're unable to fast because you're sick or you're, you're too old or you're weak, you're, you're exempted from fasting. So there are a few of the rules. What then, what's the importance of, of Ramadan? This is, this is the important thing. Ramadan is, it's such a beautiful month. You know, I said in the other video about getting ready for Ramadan, as one who accepted Islam later in life, you know, I could honestly put my hand on my heart and say that Islam for me, it's like Christmas and New Year and birthdays and Thanksgiving all rolled into one. It truly is the most beautiful of months, better than a thousand months, it tells us in the Quran. Why? Why is it better than a thousand months? Because we become better people and we become closer to Allah Almighty. That's what Ramadan's about. It's becoming closer to our Creator. It's not about keeping rules and regulations. It's about coming closer to our Creator, to become better people, to become better Muslims. Ramadan is the month of the Quran. The, the, the noble Quran, the holy Quran, was first revealed to our beloved Prophet Muhammad wasalam, during the month of Ramadan. And during Ramadan, we try as best we can to recite as much of the Quran as we can. We even attend in the mosque, if we're able to, it's, it's strongly recommended that we try. We attend Salat al-Tarawih in the evening, where the, the, the Quran is recited, and during the, the, the course of Ramadan, the whole of the Quran will be recited. So we're encouraged to do that. Ramadan is the month of prayer. It's a month where we, when we set aside time. It's a month when we try. You know, we try to get up in the middle of the night uh, when all is dark and quiet and all the busyness of life has gone. It's that we get up quietly. No one need to see us. And we, we prostrate ourselves before Allah and we listen to him. And we know we know that Allah is, is waiting and listening for those who will come to him in the night and ask things of him. So Islam um, tells us that Ramadan is a month of prayer, Quran and prayer. And it's a month of fasting. fasting. Not a punishment, not a dieting, but a fasting for Allah's sake. We do it for Allah's sake. Why? So that we become better people, so that we are spiritually renewed. It's like... You know, you've heard of spring cleaning. You know, after the dark months of winter, many housewives, they sweep out the house and they, they, they shake away the cobwebs and clean the carpets and get the house nice and clean. As, as the seasons are changing, it's becoming more cheerful outside. Many housewives clean the house. Well, Ramadan, whenever it falls during the year, Ramadan is a tie. It's like a spring cleaning of our hearts and our lives. We're dusting away all of the rubbish, all of the cobwebs that have clinged to our hearts during the past year, we're, we're brushing them away. We're saying to Allah in Ramadan, I am sorry, O oh Allah, for all those mistakes I made, for all the things I deliberately did wrong. And it's a time to come closer to him. Um, just a word, you know, though, about fasting. It, it's very important to remember, in, in Cairo, you know, there's this... When the Adan sounds for Salat al-Maghrib, at the citadel in Cairo, a cannon sounds. As soon as the Adan is sounded, the cannon goes off to, to let the people around know that the fasting has ended. And you, it's, it's a nice idea. And I tell people in Cairo, you know, there are many people today whose fast won't end with the sound of a cannon being fired. There are many people in our world during Ramadan who will starve to death because they've nothing to eat or drink, and the cannon won't signal the start of feasting and celebrating and, and breaking our food together and sharing iftar, breaking the fast 
breakfast because they will die. So Ramadan as well, it teaches us to thank, to thank Allah Almighty for all the blessings we have. You know, we, we can't number the blessings we have. We thank Allah for our, for our, our hearing and our sight, our, our, our speech, our sense of smell. You know, the fact that we can walk and, and move around and, and experience this, this world and everything in it. We thank Allah for that. We thank Allah for our families and, and for our friends, for, for opportunities he, he, he gives us. It's a time for sitting down and thanking Allah for all of those beautiful things that we've taken for granted. One thing we take for granted, water. You know, we, 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 we remember in Ramadan how important water is because we're going without it. But, you know, it, it helps us remember that during the year we can just turn on the tap whenever we want to drink. What a wonderful gift water is. It is life-giving and refreshing and cleansing. And we just, oh, it's one of those things. I'll have a drink of water. So inshallah, Ramadan will be a time where we will become better people, better Muslims for Allah's sake. Fasting is prescribed to you as it was prescribed to those before you that ye may learn taqwa, that you may learn piety, Fear of the Lord are become better people. Insha'Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.